Hello, welcome back to my allotment. I'm Katrina and today we're going to talk all about straw flowers because these little blooms are fast becoming one of my favourite flowers to grow here on the allotment. So in this video we'll talk about why I think you should be growing them, how to grow them, how I cut and dry them and also I'll show you how I make my flower bauble decorations. So what is the straw flower? Well, it's part of the Asteraceae family, so that's the same family as your asters, your sunflowers and lots of daisy-like flowers. It's also commonly known as the straw flower or the paper flower or the everlasting flower. It used to be part of the genus Helichrysum bracteatum, but it's actually been reclassified. So some people still call it that, but in the 1990s it was reclassified to Xerochrysum bracteatum. So that is its botanical name. It grows in places like Australia where it's native, which means it's really drought tolerant and the flowers are really papery and dry. These what look like pestles are actually the bracts and they're just so papery and they dry really, really well. So they're a great flower for growing in our gardens. So why should you be growing them? Well, they come in so many different colors and right here I've grown a mix of seed that includes oranges, whites, pinks, reds, and creams as well. So you get so many different colors. And once they fully open, the big landing pad in the middle acts like a magnet to pollinators. It's like this huge beacon saying, come pollinate me. I've seen all sorts of pollinators on them, including bees and hoverflies and wasps. And we need the wasps to keep our aphid populations in check. So they're a great flower to grow to attract lots of different pollinators into your gardens. They're also really quite easy and cheap to grow from seed. And the straw flower is a very popular choice for um, florists because you can cut the flowers, dry them, and then make dry flower arrangements, which are especially great in winter because they keep that intense color throughout the winter months when they're dried correctly. So you've got this big burst of floral color in the depths of winter when you really, really need it. They also bloom for months on end. I think I had my first blooms around early July. And as long as you keep deadheading them, I'm expecting these to bloom right into October or when we get the first frost. These are not winter hardy for us in the UK. If we get a frost, it'll kill them off. But they do cope with quite cool temperatures. So they may overwinter in your area if it doesn't get too cold. Straw flowers are also really easy to save the seed from. And this is a flower that I deadheaded a while ago. I've just found it on the floor actually. And you can see that it's gone to seed and they're all there on the surface. Uh, similar to how a dandelion would spread its seed, it disperses by wind, which is why it has these little parachute like sails that help it transport in the wind. And I can see a lot of the seeds down in the bottom there. When it comes to sowing your seeds, you can use all sorts of different containers. You might want to use a large seed tray like this one. You might like to use individual cells such as this one. Um, I'm going to be using a shallow tray. This one's got holes in the bottom. And of course, you don't even have to use proper gardening things. You could use yogurt pots or any sort of packaging um, that you have at home as long as it's got drainage holes in the bottom. Now for my compost mixture, I'm actually using Koya tonight. And this is a um, byproduct from coconut industry. So it's the husk of coconuts. It makes really good medium for sowing your seeds in because it's nice and light and it doesn't contain peat either, which is great for better for the environment. So I've already soaked this, which is why it's quite wet, um, which is good. I'm just going to spread this around to evenly fill the tray. There we are, so the surface is now nice and level on the top, so we're ready to sow the seeds. If you've got some place where you can overwinter your plants, where it won't get frosty, such as a protected greenhouse, you can actually sow these in autumn for an earlier bloom next summer. Um, it is autumn, or approaching autumn right now, but I'm really doing this just for demonstration purposes <laughs> at the moment. Um, so the seeds are, you know, a good size. They're not like dust, like some flower seeds. Um, but you don't want to sow them too thickly. So essentially I'm going to sprinkle them on the surface and straw flowers need light to germinate. So I'm going to sprinkle them across the surface, but I'm not actually going to cover them with any compost or vermiculite or anything else. We're just going to sprinkle them along the top 
as evenly as possible without getting them too close together. That should do it. What I'll actually do next is um, fill this tray underneath that doesn't have any holes with water and just give it a little bit of a water bath and what that will do is the water will seep up into the compost and just give it a nice soaking, put it all together and um, those seeds should be germinating in no time. As long as they're kept damp on the top that should be enough to get them growing. And then once the seedlings are big enough to handle I would then transplant them into a bigger pot. Now it depends what size you're working from, um, if you're growing your seedlings in, in a cell tray like this then you might just want to pull out one or two if you've got quite a few growing in each cell um, but for me I prefer to move them into a bigger pot uh, such as this nine centimeter square pot and then leave it in this until it's big enough to um, withstand being put outside. So once the risk of frost has passed, um, that's when I would plant them out. I'd usually sow them at the beginning of April, about six weeks before the last frost date, and then plant them out around the second week of May. So that is how I sow them. It's very simple. And you could also perhaps direct sow them um, once that risk of frost has passed, just by sprinkling them on the surface of some damp soil and then making sure that they're kept wet and they should soon germinate. When you're planting out your plants, I like to give mine a good spacing of about 12 inches. And then when, when the plants are about nine or 12 inches tall, I'll actually just pinch out the top. Pinching out the growing tip encourages a more bushier plant that's going to stand up to the wind and you'll also get more flowers and um, just be a much more sturdier, stockier little plant. I've stepped back so you can see how I'm growing them and this year I've got them in a rather shallow raised bed so they've gained a little bit in height but usually they'd grow to about 70 centimetres and you know what I find they're really low maintenance after I planted them out obviously I made sure they were watered in to get their roots really nice and established but other than that I've just kept on deadheading them and that's about all, of they, all that they require. We did have a few windy weeks in the middle of summer so I did go around and use these natural sticks as stakes just to hold them in place so that they didn't rock around too much and snap and break in the wind so I've, I've given them a little bit of support in that regard but otherwise, you know, I haven't been feeding them. I find they're really low maintenance and they just look after themselves. When you're cutting your straw flowers, you want to use a nice sharp pair of secateurs and cut them on a nice dry day, preferably in the morning if you can. And it's all about timing with straw flowers. Sometimes you want them when they've opened just a little bit and sometimes you might want them when they're still fully closed buds. Some people don't really like them when they're fully opened so you may want to cut them before they've fully opened and showed their centre but I don't mind, I like a little bit of both so I just cut them when I'm ready. I find that when I'm making my bauble decorations it's actually quite useful to cut them when they're still quite small tight buds that way you have a mixture of different sizes that you can work with because sometimes you need a little bit of variety. You may notice that I'm actually cutting them with very small stems and that's because I want to get even more flowers. I'm not using these for bouquets, I don't really need a long stem so I'm cutting them quite short but if you want nice long stems by all means go a little bit lower. Now it is worth remembering that when you cut your straw flowers they will open up some more when you dry them and store them so this will have a few more layers open up but this is perfect for picking right now it's also got a little bud there on the side and that's fine because I like to have a mixture of different sizes now where you make the cut depends on how long you want the stem and how many more flowers you want um, and if you prefer more flowers over a long stem so if you're flower arranging you might want a nice long stem which means you would probably cut it about here uh, so that is where more flower buds will eventually come out from so you can make the cut right there like so but if you're not too worried about the length of your stem equally you could cut it right here or you could cut it right here or you could also cut it right here just above that leaf node is where you'll get more flowers coming so it's entirely up to you on how much you want a long stem or if you want more flowers
You may have noticed I'm actually growing this rather fluffy grass with my straw flowers as well and this is Panicum elegans a frosted explosion grass and it is such a beautiful filler for your flower arrangements it's just got a really beautiful texture and it looks great with the straw flowers so I recommend growing this with it if you're going to make a whole bed of straw flowers and this will also dry really beautifully as well To prep our straw flowers for drying, what we're essentially going to do is create a little miniature bouquet that we're going to suspend upside down. Uh, but when you're drying flowers, moisture is the enemy and it's important to remove any moisture at all, which means we're going to first get rid of all of the foliage from the flowers. So I'm just going to strip that off with my fingers because we don't really need the leaves. It's all about those really bright, colourful flowers. So we just pull all the foliage away, leaving a nice clean stem. Obviously my stems are quite short, but that doesn't matter. You know, if you're flower arranging or you want a nice long stem, then you might have a little bit more foliage to remove. So for my bouquets, they're only going to be miniature little posies of about eight or ten flowers. And these are all still quite small because for my um, bauble projects, I like to use quite small blooms. Now that all of the leaves are removed, it's time to tie these into a small little posy. So what I'll do is take about 12 inches of string. Cut it there. We're going to fold it in half so that the ends are together. We've got a nice loop. And this is, uh, makes it easier when you're using just one hand. So what we're going to do is hold the flowers upside down, bring all those stems together, let the flower head sit at the bottom. We're going to wrap the string around and tie and thread those ends through the loop and then pull nice and tight. And they're already pretty snug in there. But what we're going to do next is take one string to the left and one string to the right. And I like to tie it off with a double knot just for extra security. Now I'm not going to tie these ends just yet because we're next going to move these over to our little drying station and then you can tie it onto a rail, a post, a bar, wherever it is that you're driving your flowers. Now that our three little posies are ready, we're going to hang them up to dry. And the most important thing when you're drying your flowers is to make sure they're in a space that's well ventilated. It doesn't get too hot, it's dry and there's no direct sunlight. I've put a few of them in my shed before and I found that my shed does get quite hot in the summer months, which means the flowers start to open even more when actually I still prefer them when they're still quite closed. So I would actually take them home and um, dry them somewhere where they don't get too much sunlight. That is the most important thing. And also direct sunlight will actually um, fade the flowers faster as well. These are some of the materials that we'll be using today. So I have a glue gun with some glue sticks. Of course, we've got the straw flowers, a pair of scissors. These wires are actually florist wires. I'll be covering um, those on how I use them a little bit later. For the base of the baubles, I actually use these cardboard deco patch bases and you can get them from most craft or hobby shops. They're made out of cardboard, which means they're really environmentally friendly and I would avoid at all costs using the floral foam, oasis foam or polystyrene because they're really bad for the environment. We've also got some ribbon here. We might need to finish our baubles off with some nice decorative ribbon. And that's it. 
So I've got here two little bunches of straw flowers that have been drying. You can see some of them are fully opened and some of them are still quite closed. So we've got a nice little mix. And in this tray here, I've also got lots of straw flower heads that I've already destemmed so that they're ready to use. So for this project, the stems are no longer required. So I'm actually just going to snip away all of those flower heads. These are two of the baubles that I've made previously. You can see this one has a mix of different pinks and yellows, and this one is mostly yellows and reds for a nice golden color. So it's completely up to you whether you mix the tones or not. Um, sometimes I prefer to stick to one type. For this project, I'm gonna use a very small base and use a lot of yellows and oranges to fill it, I think, because I want to make this a nice Christmassy one. So for any flowers that do not yet have their stems removed, just take those off. And then all we're gonna do is glue the back onto this base. Just remember that glue guns are very hot. <laughs> so just be careful. So what I'll do is I'll apply a little bit of the glue to the back, press it down to clean the, the nozzle. And then you just pop it on press it and hold it for a few seconds. And this glue dries very quickly, which is one of the benefits of using it. Whereas super glue can take quite a long time. I think that will fit quite nicely there. And glue guns can be quite messy to work with. You can get like stringy um, pieces that come off, but I find that it's quite easy to remove them afterwards. So again, just filling that little gap. You can see in this tray here, I've got a range of different sizes to work with, and some are more open than others, which gives us a great variety to choose from. So you can see how the backs are actually quite flat already. So it's just a case of popping on a little blob of that glue. And obviously I've already put down a work surface here to protect my table because glue guns are quite messy to work with. <laughs> So yeah, just press that on and you can see how I'm filling in the gaps. You want to work um, close to each other rather than dotting them all around. So I think I want a nice dark orange color just to fit in that little bit there. So that size works quite nicely. Remove a little bit more of that stem, pop on the glue and it's just as easy as this really. Obviously you still get a little bit of working time to budge the flowers and move them around before the glue sets. And then you just want to fill them out until you get up to the string. I really do love the orange colors. I find that they keep their vibrancy a lot longer than some of the other colors. And the white ones do tend to turn a little bit yellow after a while. Where should we put this one? I think around about there. So you want to cover as much of the base as you can. Don't worry if you have a few little gaps in between because you can always fill those later with the smaller straw flowers. But they've dried really well. As you can see, it does actually take quite a few flowers to fill even this very small base. And I probably would get through a couple of glue sticks as well but these are going to make fantastic Christmas decorations. Imagine this hung on your tree and you can always give them to your friends and family as well. So you can see we've already nicely filled it out quite well. I do find that when you get to the top where the string is, uh, you may or may not have a string already attached. So uh, if you do come to the point where the string is, I find it's better to have a couple of big ones either side rather than lots of small ones because then that helps disguise the base of the string much better. Now most of the bauble is filled. We've just got the remaining gaps here up by the string. And this is where some of those much smaller heads come in handy. 
like this one here. It's much smaller in size. Still got a nice flat base to work with. And we can just fill in those little gaps with the smaller straw flowers. So I've got a little hole there and I'm just gonna pop them in. Like so. And we've just got a couple more down here and then we're almost done. And there we have the first straw flower bauble complete in lovely golden orange colours. We've filled all those gaps and this one already has a little string to hang it up with. But if your base doesn't have one, you can just snip a piece of decorative string and then glue both of those ends there and secure that onto the base. And you've got a nice decorative ribbon there. Another way that you can make a hanging decoration without using glue is actually to use these little open-faced baubles or terrariums. I think they're sometimes used to have air plants in them. And you can just stuff them full of your little straw flowers and that'll make a nice colorful little hanging decoration. And it's so quick and easy. <laughs> and these would also be great to give to your friends and your family. And there, look at that, how beautiful. Now you can see that this flower here is already quite open, so it's not ideal for using for our straw flower baubles, but what we can do is attach it to a wire. And this is a little trick that I found from, I think it was Zoe at Swan Cottage Flowers. And if you take a florist wire like this and just fold it in half, and now we're going to poke those ends through the center of the flower. And what that will do is it'll give us a much stronger, more flexible wire or stem to work with other projects and little arrangements. So I'm just gonna poke these ends through the center here. Obviously watch out for your fingers. There we are. And now this wire actually acts like the stem. So we can use that to twist onto uh, different features, different branches, however you want to display them. I actually started to make this sort of autumn wreath with lots of twisted willow. And we've got the straw flowers here on wire that we can just poke into the frame of the wreath. Over time, your straw flower decorations will inevitably lose some of their colour and vibrancy, but to prolong that colour for as long as possible, keep them out of direct sunlight as much as you can and away from any heat sources such as your radiators. You should then be able to get a colourful display for about six to eight months or maybe even longer, and by then you should be able to make some more with next year's blooms. Well, I really hope this video has given you some ideas on how you can grow straw flowers and use them to create lots of decorations for your home. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.